We're both working at Neophony, which is a digital agency based in Berlin. And we're both, both part of the team research slash AI slash search. And uh, what we want to talk about today is well, our two of our customer projects where we were presented with the task of optimizing searches. And while we were doing that, we had to establish a gold standard based evaluation. And yeah, we would like to talk about that at first. Oh. Um, we will start by our uh, presenting why we actually need an evaluation. And then we will share some insights on what the basics of our evaluation of our evaluation are and go into, into a little more detail on some customer specifics. And in the end, we will finish with some insights, some learnings on how to communicate the need and the results of such an evaluation. So why do we need an evaluation? Um, I will start with a simple example. Um, here you can see the website of one of our customers. This is Bechtle. Bechtle is an IT company, they have a shop where they sell hardware, software, solutions, everything related to IT. And when we started working with them, they already had this shop, they already, already had a functioning search in their shop. And the search was, was and is based on Elasticsearch and our task was just to improve this search because they had some issues with this search, um, some queries which didn't return the expected results. And one of the first patterns we found when we were presented with some queries, some query examples, was that they had queries, uh, for example, like laptops, when users entered laptops in a plural form into their uh, search field, um, they didn't get enough results because, well, the stemming was not activated on the right fields. So if the title just said laptop, they didn't match and didn't find enough matches. So our solution was just simple, we just introduced stemming um, to their system. And what we expected to see was an improvement, of course, of the search. And we did see that. But with some queries, we also saw something else. Um, I will show you. So for example, with this query, um, if people entered Apple um, into the search field, before, um, before we introduced stemming, you would see on the left side what happens. We had um, very good results. So on the x-axis of this diagram, you see the number of results in their order. And on the left side, you see, on the y-axis, you see the performance of the search. So you see on the left side, the first 200, 250 results were pretty accurate. They were good for this query. But after we introduced stemming, the picture changed. So you see on the right side, the performance of the search dropped, which was somehow surprising at first to us. And the thing you can see here, the diagrams are actually already part of our, already part of our evaluation. And this is another part of the evaluation. Um, these are the lists of results we saw. Here you can see the first 28 results and you see the first 22 results are highlighted red. And this is just because they are false positives. So these are results we didn't want to see. And they gave us an insight on what happened. We'll just pick one of the results here. Here you can see what happened. So you see here the title of the product, which uh, includes Apple without an E because this is short for appliance and the stemming just um, made the E of the query um, disappear. And of course, then you had a match. And this was not what we wanted to see, of course. So we had queries like laptops, which improved, improved when we introduced stemming and we had queries like this one which got worse results. And this was the point where we and also the customer um, understood that we actually needed an evaluation because we couldn't, we couldn't decide what we want to do. Did, did we want to introduce uh, stemming to the uh, search system or not? So this is one of the examples. We have more examples if you need them, but this was a very um, obvious one. And what our basic idea base is, is the following. So when we establish a gold standard corpus to evaluate um, against it, we just define examples of search queries. And ideally we obtain all the desirable results for each of these search queries. And whenever a change has been made to the search configuration, we can evaluate by means of these examples. So we query or index 
with all these example queries um, before we make a change and after. And then we can just compare the performance of the search. In order to build such a corpus, we generate um, for these example queries um, a number of results we want to see. So here you can see a list of results. And on the right side, there is a column which says keep. So our customer can just decide when he sees such a line on this um, Excel sheet, whether this is something he wants to see for the query MacBook or not. So this involves actually some manual work from the side of the customer, um, but it helps in order to build this corpus. Okay, now it's your turn, Bertram. <laughs> So the customer would usually like to get some um, informative metrics uh, out of the system at the end. For so so in the in a perfect world that would be basically one number that tells you how good your system is working, if it got better or worse. Overall, we have one measure that we find particularly um, useful, and that is mean average precision. Uh, so this is a bit technical, but in in general, what it does it it uh, puts more weight on the first re results of the, um, of, the, of the first search results, basically. Um, so uh, you, you, you get a lot of documents back from one query and those are usually ordered and uh, we put more emphasis on the first ones. When the first ones are right uh, and the last ones are um, not correct, then this is not as worse as the other way around. Um, the way this mathematically works is basically that um, we compute the um, precision recall curve, which you see on the bottom. Uh, a lot of you probably know this already. Um, and uh, average precision is basically the area under the curve. But it does basically that. It weights the first results more strongly. Yeah. Okay, and this is how our evaluation in the end looks for our customer. So we generate reports. Um, I know this is a little bit small, but I will zoom in in a minute. Um, so here you can see that we at first we put an overall performance of the search. So all the search queries which are part of our gold standard are put together and the performance of the search overall is um, represented by, this, by these queries um, on the top. And then we also generate groups um, of queries. So for example, if you have queries, uh, which in this case uh, consist of only one tokens, we put all of these queries because they are similar in this parameter, we put them into one group and we can compare the groups um, of queries, but you could also imagine different groups. So we had the distinction between uh, one token queries and multi-token queries, but you could also take other parameters in order to compare query groups. And then of course, and of course, we also have the individual queries. So part of our report is the overall performance, the group performance, and the individual query, because these reports, they not only show us um, the performance of the search, but they also give us clues as to what went wrong if something went wrong. So if we see a certain group of queries performing worse than before or change, we can just read these diagrams, basically. Okay, so these are the basics, and now we would like to show you a little bit um, of our project work, and Bertram will start with our work for Bechtle. Um, so Bechtle is a, um, a, a big provider for um, computer, for, for information technology services, uh, for um, computer products and the like. Uh, so basically, when you're here, you need an um, ideally complete list of uh, results for a number of queries. That seems like a very hard thing to get. Uh, it seems like a lot of work that you do have uh, to do before you basically start the project. Um, and we developed a couple of ways to make this process uh, more bearable, basically. Um, so in, a, in an ideal world, you want a, a large variety of queries and for these queries, you want the perfect and complete list of results. This is basically a dream world that you will never achieve, but the good thing about that is uh, having something close to it or even something just approaching it um, is useful already. Um, 
the way we do it is basically uh, the customer usually has some sort of search system already in place. And we um, use this search engine for a couple of queries, usually queries that are, um, uh, that are given a lot of times by, by the um, users of the system. Um, and we try to get the most sensitive result that we can get. So basically, uh, enable stemming, enable synonyms. Uh, also, we uh, do not only use one query, but we actually do some query aug augmentation. So um, if you are looking for MacBook, for example, you might also look for um, Apple laptop or something like that. So you try to get um, too many results, basically. You try to be extra sensitive in a way that your search system should not be. Um, and then uh, you need to have users, um, in, in, in the best case, a couple of them, uh, from the company, basically evaluating the results that you get. But the way we also make that process uh, more bearable is basically that we are uh, ranking the, the results. They are basically already ranked if we get them from a search system. And we try to give extra information why um, the result got a hit, basically, and um, why it got ranked high or low. So in this, uh, th this image basically shows what it would look like for the person um, uh, labeling the um, gold standard. And it shows um, uh, the little check marks in the in the back show that uh, a match was found in the uh, name of the project or the family name of the project, or if it was found over a synonym or something like that. And there is usually clusters of um, documents that are quite alike. And if you evaluate one of them, you can usually just check off a couple of them in one go. And this way, it is possible to actually get through a, a big load of documents, hundreds of them, in quite a tolerable amount of time. Um, that is basically how we do that. Okay, and this is our second project. So this is not actually um, e-commerce. This is a health insurance company. I'm not allowed to say the name, but it still might be interesting because it has some, you know, some things and which way this differs from Bechte. So our task here was to um, optimize an intranet search for different user groups. So this health insurance company, they have their internal knowledge and they have their employees who query this internal database of information. And these people, they see different um, things dependent on what user group they belong to. So they're allowed to see different contents and we have to optimize the search for all of them. And that's why we have to um, build a gold standard corpus for different user groups. Um, so we had to find out, first of all, which queries um, below, were um, relevant to which uh, user group in order to find suitable queries for each user group gold standard corpus. Um, in order to do that, we just made use of the fact that we had log. We had log data because we have an internet search. We have a lot of information in these log data. So we have the information on what um, user group the people who entered search terms um, belong to. And well, we could have just said we take all the queries which were uh, entered um, during a certain time period uh, for this user group and, and, uh, and put them into our gold standard. But that, of course, is too much. So they, they just have too many queries. We couldn't uh, afford to build such a big gold standard corpus. So we decided just to take the most frequent um, user queries. Still, there was a problem yet because and sometimes we have um, different variants of similar queries. So queries like these, they are semantically basically the same. Also on the surface, they are pretty similar to each other. And all of these queries actually belong together. So what we did, we measured distances between all the queries and the logs and clustered them uh, in a multidimensional vector space so that we got something like this, some cluster where we could just take one of these queries as a representative for our gold standard corpus. Here you see another example of, a, of a, such a cluster. And um, here we would have taken the third query you can see, so Mitgliedsbescheinigung English. 
um, because uh, below that query term, you can see the count, which um, just says that this query was uh, entered 70, uh, 27 times uh, during our log data period. So this was the most frequent query of this cluster. So in our Goldstone at Corpus, we wanted to include the most frequently um, asked clusters in, um, in the log data. But still, we had some different objectives to um, think about because for our gold standard corpus, we want to have a heterogeneous mix of queries because we want to represent all the all typical queries that could come up um, when user uh, search the index. And we are showing this heterogeneity by including different from different topics, the queries from different topics, queries which include special characters, whose token number differs and so on, because our hypothesis is, um, if we create a diverse mix of queries um, regarding certain parameters, we would also um, create a diverse mix of queries regarding unknown parameters, which might become handy when we see an issue later. So, and this was partially done manually, I have to uh, say. And, after we've done this, we again have to obtain at ideally all desirable results for each of these search queries. Um, so our goal again was to create too many results and discard those results which are not relevant. Um, unfortunately, um, the index looks a little bit different than with Eschler, so we don't have a, a different fields or something like that where we can just find out, okay, if this query has been has matches in a lot of fields is probably very relevant. Instead, the customer just has the goal to put all the information in one field and in one text body field, except for a title. So we have a title and a text body field, which is not much information. So here we focus on augmenting the queries or enriching them by um, taking different variants of our queries. So here you can see, um, for a query like bariatrische OP, which was, which would be part of our gold standard, um, we would also include um, the results of query variants like those you can see in the top, which are um, basically the cluster variants. We could just take the clusters, and um, below there are still other clusters which are synonyms, etc. Yeah, and then we have all these queries, all their search results, and we put them together and. Um, to have these possibly relevant results to our search query. And again, then we would have to make use of users who decide about the relevance of each of these search results. In this case, this has been done not with lists, um, but with a survey, which is a little more user-friendly. Um, also because we had very many different users who had to decide about the relevance because of course, again, we had to um, use people from different user groups of our employee to decide about the relevance of search results. Okay, I cannot say more to the project uh, about the project yet because this is still work in progress. Um, but we can say is something about the communication. So while we were doing these projects, we have had issues with communication. I can admit that because well, some of our customers just, well, the people just didn't understand what we would try to explain. So what we learned that first of all is that we would have to bear in mind who we're talking to. So for example, if we were talking to decision makers, we wouldn't have to get into too much technical detail. They wouldn't want to listen or if they wanted to listen, they wouldn't understand. So they just want to see an overall progress. They want to see this one big number, which basically should improve. That should become better, of course. And they want to be um, able to check the quality of the search very quickly. Then there is another group of people where we were also talking to developers. Those people, they have to be able to reproduce issues too. So we have to make them visible uh, to them. So we might need these uh, graphics. We also, um, need these lists so they can fix issues and they can see if the issues have been fixed when they are working on it. And the third group we were talking to are data scientists who are well, somehow in the middle of these two groups. 
they have to be able to identify issues on a broader scale and compare solutions um, to, uh, yeah, to these issues. So they are actually these people who can work with the metrics, they can work with the numbers and uh, illustration here, they can see where something went wrong. And another learning, I have no slide for that, but you have seen that uh, for yourselves. Um, we had to use examples. So for all these people, whenever we were talking to them, we had to use examples. So another point that we found in, important to communicate is uh, you can feel overwhelmed when you start getting into the creation of a gold standard because you want to have a lot of queries, you want to have a, a big corpus of uh, requests and um, results. Um, but an important thing is a flawed gold standard is better than none at all. Um, and if you try to think too, um, if you're trying to be a perfectionist too much about this process, you will get nowhere at all. So you just have to start um, with the basics, basically. Um, you can go ahead and show the next slide. Um, so there is the question like how do you get complete results for for a query uh, how do you get all the results that would be um expected or wanted and it's basically impossible you will not get it there will uh if, if you have a very big corpus there might be thousands of results and one of them will always go basically uh through your system of creation but this is not a problem um you you still get a lot of use out of uh, uh, a gold standard that is all right, that has a lot of the real results that you want to, or that has a couple of wrong ones, because statistically you still get um, some pointers in which direction you want to go. Um, the other thing you might think about is ranking. Don't I want a gold standard that also tells me which documents should be uh, in the in the top um, ranks which one should be in the bottom. Um, we completely ignore this problem usually. Uh, this is for two reasons. It's hard to get a ranking, it's a lot of work, um, and there's no perfect one. Um, uh, you, you could have uh, five people, five, five experts labeling um, a gold standard, and they would have five different opinions which ranking the documents should be in. Um, so, uh, so we just ignore that problem for now. Um, the good thing about that is now, if you want to be a perfect, if, if you want to get a perfect gold standard at some point, uh, a gold standard can always be iteratively, uh, iteratively improved upon. That means uh, you first start with trying to get a lot of good results in there and you evaluate with that. But while you are evaluating, you might see that some documents are missing and you can just add them to it. Or if you want to add ranking to your evaluation system, um, then you can, you can still rank order these results uh, after you have them. Um, so basically just start with this pro progress it might seem like a huge workload, basically. Do you, you have to have a, some experts just um, uh, spend some time on, on getting these results, but you have to keep in mind that if you have an iterative process of um, uh, making your uh, search system better, you have to evaluate all the time anyway. You have to have people there who uh, look at the results and see if it got better, if there's any problems with it. Uh, and the gold standard is just uh, um, a systematized way to do this. Uh, it grows while you're doing the work. You're not doing the work all the time, but you, you iteratively improve your evaluation system. Um, so that is basically uh, what we learned from this process. Uh, it is great for customers to have like one number, but the real um, striking uh, great thing about a gold standard that we learned is, is it is a, a very good dev tool. It is just, you are making an iterative improvement to your search system and it shows you if you broke something. Uh, it shows you that while you might have made some improvements in one part of the system, you see that some queries just give weird results now and you can directly uh, improve that problem. 
that is where we see um, a, a large usefulness in this um, endeavor. All right. Okay, I guess that's it. So if you have any questions or feedback, we're open. If we have time, I'm not sure if we have time. Yes, thank you, Bertram. Thank you, Kania. We do have, and we do have a question, so that matches. And um, I'm quoting Sebastian uh, with great insight. One question, how frequently do you re-rate results? I observed the problem that metrics will decrease with every week, in le at least in e-commerce, when new products come in, etc. cetera. Huh? Two thousand two, Amma ki one thousand two, Navin that one thousand. Do you want to answer better, or should I? Um. So, wait, I'm I'm thinking about the 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 metrics will decrease with every week. Um, part of of uh, of the question. We we re rank basically. Uh, that that is an iterative process that that happens with every evaluation. You might find a couple of things that you didn't expect. And also sometimes you have to grow the gold standard when some, um, some, someone finds basically a problem that your gold standard didn't see before. There is one query that gives a weird result in your search and it was actually not covered by the gold standard before. That is one uh, situation where we change the gold standard. And, and during every iteration, it might be that somebody finds like a couple of docu documents that should be in there and that aren't yet. Um, um, yeah, so, so actually with every evaluation step, there might be some small changes to, uh, to, to the gold standard. That, then you kind of have to re-evaluate the, the ones you did before. I'm, I'm, uh, Connie, do you do you understand uh, like like the decrease in every week? Um, no, I think it's just when you add products to a shop, so you can't have them in the gold standard yet. So of course you have to um, reevaluate them, um, include these products. But well, it, it depends, right? So if you have a shop where every week there come new products, of course you have to do it more often. And in shops where the the product um, um, set stays the same. Um, so I think you cannot say that so um, overall for everyone. All right, so maybe that depends on the on the e-commerce domain and basically the product that uh, you're coping with. Um, there's another question from Rene um, and it's about what's your approach to dealing with inter-rater disagreement? So, what is your perspective on that? I guess um, with Bechtel, we just had one user um, evaluating, which is not good, of course, but it's, it's a start. So there is no interrated disagreement then. Um, in the other case, <laughs> in the other case, we have um, different people evaluating and we're just averaging basically. So when I see we have, uh, I have five people answering the question. I see three of them says, this is a helpful result. I say, okay, it's helpful. Um, of course, I could could put more work into that, but as Bertram said, we have to make a start, and this is just a simple start. At some point, we might get a, a more uh, advanced met metric to deal with that, but at that point, it's just that simple. All right, thank you. Then thanks a lot, Bertram and Cornelia, for your uh, insights and um, like going that deep into the uh, customer project, actually. Uh, I found that very striking. So thanks a lot. Uh, feel yourself filled with a big round of applause. Uh,